<laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, amen I, to that. I still, I still have a chance <laughs> to get right what I didn't get right yesterday. Amen. You know, without, without, without waking up today, man, we'll never know. Mm. Hardest part of the day over. Right, right. You know what I mean? Man. Hardest part of the day. Go ahead on. Go ahead on, brother. Father God, in the name of your wonderful, matchless son, Jesus. We're thankful for another awesome morning, Lord, that we can come together and commune in your word, Lord. We ask that you just heal us, Lord, from all the sickness and diseases that is trying to take our body, Lord. You know that we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And we also know, Lord, that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. We're thankful, Lord, that we can come today, Lord, and commune in your word, in the spirit, to know what thus says the Lord so we can know our way. Lord, continue, Lord, to work through us, Lord, to continue to allow your power to go forth, Lord, so that we may be healed. And in that healing, that we may heal others, Lord. You gave us the power to go forth and cast out demons, to, to preach your word, Lord, and to do all the many wonderful things in your name. So we're thankful that you continue to be with us, that you continue to illuminate and protrude all of us so men can see the good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And we're thankful that you're doing it all in the name of your mighty son, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God, Amen. brother. Praise God. Man, this is a mighty word right here we got this morning. Jesus made all things. All things was made by Jesus. Let's look. John 1 at 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Jesus made all things. He was in the world. The world was made by him. He came to his own which was the Pharisees down at the Nicene Council, the Jews. Those was a part of him, but they knew him not. His people Israel, hallelujah. Now we spoke on this many times, but we want to establish that the Father made all things through Jesus Christ, who was at the beginning with the Father. Isaiah 57, 15, thus says the high and lofty one, who inhabit eternity. I dwell in a high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble heart, ready to revive the spirit of the contrite and revive the spirit of the humble. Now that's beautiful right there. Like we said again, Jesus always been at the beginning with the Father. He has always been there. The Father made all things through Jesus. Now, just because sometimes, you know, we run across people who don't have that knowledge or that understanding, just like the word tells us, that knowledge is not in every man. But you got this man out here trying to teach and eradicate the mediator, which is Jesus. We got to be careful. Remember, John 3, 16, let us know that God gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believeth on Jesus should not perish and have eternal life. So if you're trying to eradicate the mediator, you're not going to have eternal life. You can't say that Jesus is the father and the father is Jesus. What you're doing is you're denying sonship when you do that. Salvation is in Jesus. You have to believe that he walked the earth and he ascended and he is seated on the right hand side on the father now as we speak. That is very important. He's still working from the throne. He's seated on the right hand side of the Father in the Spirit, coming to us in the Spirit and teaching His Word, unlocking His Word, healing, doing wonderful works through us. We're going to look at this Word right here. I want you to see out of this Word how when Jesus healed this man, remember, you got to understand through your studies and teaching that Jesus made all things. So when he opened our eyes at first, we don't see things as they are. But when we get born again in Jesus and he opened our eyes again, we see men as they are. That's important. I remember me when my eyes open, I'm in the streets and gang banging. 
feeling. I didn't like nobody. I didn't like myself. My eyes wasn't clearly open. I seen men as trees. <laughs> but when Jesus healed me, hallelujah, I see men as they are. Go ahead, Brother Dwayne. Go ahead, Brother Dwayne. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, you know how you say, I see men as trees. I was reading that, right? Yes, sir. Check this out. Oh, in a in a way, look, check it out. Men are like trees, and 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 I say that because not all trees produce fruit. Yeah, but all trees come from a seed, right? So if you think about a man, right? Man carry the seeds. You understand me? So so so. Today, if we are still alive, we got to ask ourselves, who are we robbing out of their fruit? Hmm. You see what I'm saying? We still here. The mango, the mango, the mango tree produce mangoes, right? But for who? Right. Whoever like mangoes. Man, man. Like the mango don't pick his own tree. The mango don't pick his own fruit. Right. If, the man if the mango don't get picked off that tree, they fall off, they grow right, they go back into the ground. Very so, good. Uh, Thank you for that, brother. Men all like trees. I, I went out reading the title, that's all I was thinking about. Like, wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I see men as trees. We are trees, bro. We got seeds. Remember, a leopard can't change his spot. What this means is, is you're the same old person until Jesus comes and change you. He's the only one that has the power to change your character. So I don't care how people come under the disguise of having the plan, having the worldly plan. If Jesus has not changed you, the real you is going to come out. Go ahead, Brother Lemuel. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I was just saying that was a good example, Dwayne. Yeah, a good example. Man. About Fruit, the mango, yeah. Man, hallelujah. Brother T, thank you for joining us, brother. Good to see you, brother. Good morning, T. Amen. Always good to see the brother. Morning, good T. Morning. How you doing? Good, good morning, morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, when I thought about that one, it, 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 it does say that God is divine and you know we are the you know the uh the branches right. but then i read it and it was like you know then i looked at it i said okay that, okay i like this right. you know so yeah all right yeah. I'm, I'm just in my listen mode man so when y'all don't hear me talking I'm, I'm 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 i'll be talking when the spirit wants me to say something Okay, amen. Hey, remember, God is so big. That's why we come together to teach each other. We coming together to teach each other because what Dwayne teach and through the spirit that God give him and what Lemuel get and what I get and T get, it all goes together and is true. You hear me? Jesus is healing this man and open this man's eyes up the first time. Now, first of all, you got to remember that you're dealing with somebody who made all things. You have to know who Jesus is to understand the equation that he is doing. He made all things. So he had an encounter with this man and opened his eyes at first and asked him what he's seen. He said he's seen men as trees. That means he's not seeing things accordingly to how he should. Then when he opened them up again, he see men as they are. You hear me? So you got the first time when your eyes is open where you see men not like they are. But when you get healed, you're going to start seeing things as they are. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Amen. says right here at Revelation 3.18, this is the healing that Jesus is doing when he heal you and give you your sight back. I counsel thee to buy of me gold that's been tried in the fire. That gold is the Holy Ghost. That thou mayest be rich in white raiment, 
Look at that. You heaven bound. You got white raiment. And that the thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. You got Jesus Christ covering you. That's the shame of your nakedness. So it does not appear in front of all men. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Amen. We need Amen. our eyes anointed so we can see what's going on down here. You got people right. up around you claiming they love you, really waiting to stab you in the back. Amen. We need spiritual eyes to see. You got somebody in your bed that's against you. You got somebody in your household that is against you. That's why Jesus bring our spouse and us together and we become one. Man. So we got to consider who we got in our household. Are you married? Did Jesus send you that individual? This is stuff we got to think about. This is why we have our studies through the week where we were just talking about marriage. We were just about talking about how God bring us together and bring us one. All this matters to how you're going to walk in the Lord and be successful. Right here at Mark 8. I'm going to stop. I'm going to let anybody speak on that, what we just talked about, if they want to, before we move on. Anybody want to speak on that? I got a question. I have a question. Amen. Now, take this out, right? Yes. So what about, say, I can't say that. Everything, if you are where you are right now, yeah, that's the purpose. That's a, that, and God uses everything bad for good, so mm. it doesn't <laughs> matter if they despise you or not. Every situation can change. Amen. Okay. okay. I, I was just thinking, never mind. You're going on. You, listen, you got like I say in the scripture, and I think I know what you're hitting at, Dwayne. Let's see if the spirit matches up. Remember, <laughs> in the square, in the word, it lets us know you can be strong in the Lord. And even if your heart is not, you don't got to see them. Yeah. You don't look at the spirit. Look at you don't yeah. gotta see them. You can stay down and be strong, but we still gotta preach the doctrine of Christ, and how he gives it to gotta, us. Come on, man. They could be strong. Come don't on. get me wrong. That's why come I keep on, saying man. if you walk it right in front of them, they're gonna conform after a while. After but if a they while. don't, God is gonna get them away from you after oh, a yeah. while. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so so when I got baptized, I'll never forget this, you know. Talking with that blind man right now. When I got baptized, the night I got baptized, I didn't do nothing that night because I was scared. On my way back home, everything that I passed going to the church to get baptized was not the same when I was coming back home after I got baptized. Right. Everything looked different. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could think about was I need to go home, boy. Right, right. <laughs> this don't look right out here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ever since then, you know, uh, I also, 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 where, where each and every one of us is, is right now in our spiritual life is not by accident. Because um, without it, right, we couldn't be who we are. So no matter how messed up we might have thought it was or whatever, we had to go through that. Okay. That's why we're here right now where we are, right? Yeah. If it wasn't, now, if it wasn't meant for us to go through none of that, right, we probably wouldn't be here. Right, right. There's a strong possibility that we would not be here. Right. You know, because we can't be who we are right now at this moment. Right. It's about going. What you this is how God, God seen the ending first. Right. Now, in the middle, some things might not go the way, but right now, where you are is where you're supposed to be. Man. That's why, Dwayne, see, it's important for you to know Christ. See, that relationship with Christ is important. That's why Jesus yes. said, that's why Jesus said, if you <laughs> know me, you should have known my father also. It's important. For you to get that relationship with Jesus. Because no man can come to the Father unless it's by Jesus. And no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draw you. So you need both. And I love that you said that, Dwayne, because in him is how we have our being. 
I don't just like the question was posed, right? What you just said in class the other day when I was up there speaking, they asked me, what would I change? And I told them I wouldn't change nothing because it took what I went through to get me here. And if I changed anything uh, from my past, then it can alter the latter course of my life, which is now. And I'm right where I'm supposed to be at. So that was good, the way you, we are right where we're supposed to be at. 811 of Mark at 21. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question him. They came forth and began to question Jesus. He was in the world and the world was made by him, but the world knew him not. So here they come questioning in God. They're coming questioning Jesus. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there'll be should no sign given unto this generation. So we see that generation wanted a sign. They didn't believe in him, that he was from the father. So they was tempting him, telling him to give them a sign. And he left them and entered into the ship again and departed to the other side. Now the disciples have forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. So Jesus left and departed on the ship and went to the other side. And the disciples forgot to take bread, but they had one loaf with them. Look at Jesus use this opportunity. Let's dig in and see what he says about this one loaf. And he charged them saying, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Let's stop right here. Jesus took that opportunity to let them know about that piece of bread Beware of the leaven, that is the rising of the Pharisees, which is over the church building. And he said, also beware of Herod, who is the government. Amen. Jesus is letting these guys know, his disciples, and them who were listening, to beware of these Pharisees that are over this building, and also to beware, beware of Herod which is the king. Amen. Amen. And they you reasoned know, among themselves. Oh, go ahead. Sorry about that. Go ahead, brother. You, you know what I'm thinking about? I was thinking about it early, but after you said that, I'm really thinking about it right now. Hey, guess what else? Look, we've been, we've been deceived. Right. You understand what I'm saying? We all have been deceived. Guess what season we're in right now, though? Hmm. To really be deceived. If you look out right now, <clears throat> if you look out to the internet right now, look at all of the stuff that you see about God. You understand? Like, so we really have to know the word. We really need to get into the idea of getting closer to God through Bible education. Because right now, man, I'm telling you, there's people that don't know the word. And guess what's going on? So they're being misled. So they're going to be deceived. So that's all I can think about when God said that watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod, right? Because they can, you can, we can keep doing man what man says, but what about what God says? Right, 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 right. I like that, Dwayne. Thank you, brother. Most oh, definitely. Leaven is rising. Remember, leaven came into play with Israel when they had to flee out of Israel and their bread was unleavened. So they ran out of there with dough, but they kept the unleavened, which is the 15th of the first month, after a day after the Passover, which is the 14th of the first month, they kept that in remembrance of when they had to flee out of Egypt and their bread was unleavened. All this is saying is beware of the rising up of the Pharisees that we know who is over the church building. That same thing lived today. Look at them in these buildings. They're cheating, scamming, they're doing everything. Beware of them. Follow Jesus. Beware of Herod. Beware of the government. Hey, they swag surfing in church, bro. Right, right. 
<laughs> Come on, like I'm trying to understand what. Right. We gonna okay. walk it out. What? All we saying is what Dwayne said. Find yeah. Jesus. Get yourself to a study where you can study the word. You can study the word, not man's doctrine. Study what Jesus is saying and doing. This is how you free yourself. And he charged them, saying, "Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod." And they reasoned among themselves, saying, "Is it because we have no bread?" So we see the disciples and took it the whole another way. Jesus used that moment to teach them, but they still stuck on bread. Watch what Jesus tell them. And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, why reason ye because you have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your hearts yet hardened? So just in that short time, remember before this, Jesus just fed the 5,000. So that's why Jesus was telling them, you don't got no understanding of what I'm saying? Have your hearts hardened that quick? You still stuck on bread when he just took seven loaves and fed 5,000 and you took up seven baskets or 12 baskets. <laughs> Understand who you with is what Jesus is telling his disciples. Having eyes, you see not. And having ears, you hear not. Remember, we talked about the first time when you was made and you see men as trees. But when he heal you again, you see men as they are. Look at having eyes and see not and having ears and hear not. And do you remember when I break five loaves among 5,000 and how many baskets full of fragments you took up? They say unto him, 12. And when the seven among 4,000, and, and when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of the fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. And he said unto them, how is it that you do not understand? Amen. Jesus was trying to get them to understand he was using parables to speak to them. So other people around that wasn't part couldn't understand how he was speaking to them. But still, we see that they still didn't get it. They still talking about bread. And Jesus was using the analogy of bread to show them to be aware of the leaven of the church building. The Pharisees is over. Remember? The Pharisees was over the buildings. They were scared to preach Jesus because they might get put out the synagogue. That same thing is today. People don't want to hear you in the spirit talking about Jesus and you got to refrain and stop from doing all of this and this of the world. They don't want to hear that. Look at they in these buildings acting worldly. Every time you turn around, there's somebody in these buildings doing something. Jesus says, beware of that. Jesus says, beware of Herod, beware of the government. Are oh, y'all talking about you want 5013C, supposed to be part of the church, but you want to tie into the government for funding? No, do like the Apostle Paul said, go work. We go out to eat, we fund our own agenda to show brothers we care and love them. We don't need the church's money, the church building's money. We don't need the government. We don't need Nebuchadnezzar's money to fund us. You go work. Go be a tent maker like the Apostle Paul said. I work. If I wanted to get this for preaching the gospel, I could. But I work so the gospel won't be hindered. A lot of people are hindering the gospel. You want to live on, live on Jesus. Live on the building, the extortion of people. No, go work and fund it. Show your heart. Show you serious about what you're preaching. Because the first who was in his own cause. Remember what the word tells us. Amen. Amen. Hey, I heard that on um, the boy, uh, you know, Gino Jennings. Yeah. Uh, that was that was something he talked about one Sunday. Uh, do y'all think a pastor should have a job, or do y'all think the church should take care of the pastor? You know what I'm saying? That's that's good right there, bro. Oh, you gotta, oh. with, you gotta be careful with a lot of people, Dwayne. Even like that. Bro. Oh man, he don't yes. believe in Jesus. He don't believe in Jesus. He man, said Jesus look. is the Father. That's the Antichrist spirit. When hey, he said that, Jesus didn't walk the earth, and yeah. he said Jesus is the Father. That is the yeah. Antichrist spirit. Oh, and look, yeah, he got nah, a lot of people back. I don't, I don't believe it. Listen, man, man, they got some characters out here, yeah, bro. You gotta be careful. 
Yeah, I heard him say that though. You know what I'm saying, and right, that's right, what right. I thought about. But uh, you know, look, the devil know the word too. Right. The devil okay. know the word better. The right. devil know the word better than us. You know, it's 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 being able to. You know, one thing I tell a lot of dads is that, especially because I say dads because, yeah, I say dads because dads are the ones that usually go through things with the uh their kids' mother. You know what I'm saying? So right. I tell a lot of dads that listen. You gotta be the, you gotta be the one to teach your kid right. how to spit out the bone, right. show them the be difference, right. what's me right. and what's not. You right. know what I'm saying? Because as you know, some of these moms they teach their kids that their daddies ain't this, their daddies ain't right. that. He ain't never right. did this, he ain't never did that. He probably never had the opportunity to. You understand what I'm saying? Because you right. were so caught up into the world on not trying to let him be the dad to his kids, you know what I'm saying? So as men, we were, as men, we are the head, you know what I mean? We supposed to stand in the doorway and the gap for our families, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's important it. that God, look, God, when, 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 when Eve, when Eve ate off the tree of life, God ain't said nothing. The moment Adam ate off that, ate that food, God can say down. Hey, hey, right. Adam, right. where you at? Right. Adam, right. where you at? I can't find you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, so, so it was. It's all about what, what as men, what we do. Yes, God is gonna hold a woman accountable too, but right. we are the ones that stand in the gap. So right. we are the ones that's supposed to help teach. Definitely. It's our job. Man, definitely our job. Hallelujah. Remember, just like Dwayne said, the devil knows the word. This is how the devil going to deceive most of people is that he knows the word, but you got to know the word to know that the John 3, 16 is the central issue. This is a heaven or hell issue right here. Now me, I have a woman or a woman or, or, or putting on makeup or not. Yes, we are to live holy, but that's not a heaven or hell issue, whether she wear makeup to church or not. So you don't want to be down in hell with makeup off because John 3 16 says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him shall not perish and have everlasting life now this belief in Jesus you can't believe that he's the father you have to believe that he's his own self and he lined his will up with the father and first John at 2 at 22 through 25 said if you continue on in that which dropped on you you will continue on in the Father and in the Son. And that is the promise to eternal life. Because when you're going on in the Father and in the Son, you're doing what John 3, 16 said. You're believing in Jesus, which is the only begotten of the Father. And if you believe in him, you're not going to perish. You're going to have eternal life. But true belief, you got to believe that Jesus walked the earth. You can't say that Jesus was in the Father. And most of these people who got everybody at their church buildings, they say that Jesus is the father. T.D. Jakes, Geno Jennings, all of them. Marcus Rogers, they're all oneness. They're saying that Jesus was the father. You have to be careful. I just told you at Isaiah 57, 15, this says the high and lofty one who have an eternity. I dwell in a high and holy place with him also. We already spoke on John 1. <laughs> God was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's letting you know that Jesus was in the beginning with God the Father. This is letting you know that. But if you listen to other people, you're not getting in that word for yourself, then other people are going to draw you to where you didn't have no desire to go. That's why it's important you get your own self in the word. Like Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Don't let another mind be in you. You sitting up going to these buildings and they're having all of these concerts and you're not even focused on the word. This man, Jamal Bryan, I can't even believe this. He said that Jesus was 85% out of line in his ministry. Who would be still sitting around somebody that said something like that? So we got to be careful. 
And yes, these people got all the people. And that's okay. Don't just run somewhere just because they got all the people. Get Bible education like Dwayne keep telling us. Let us come together in this word, reason. Let us be Bereans to make sure these things are so. Somebody said that Jesus was 85% out of his ministry the whole time and out of line. Don't you know how much I'll get up and be so far away from you? But they got all of these people, hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people, every Sunday, house is packed on their way to hell because the blind leading the blind, they both shall fall in the ditch. Amen. Scripture is important to know, not just to know, but to understand so you can understand your ways. John 15. I got off course a little bit, but it was necessary. At three, now you are clean and four. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except the vine in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. So a lot of people how to understand the reason why your life might not be going right is because as it being a branch, you got to con stay connected to the vine. I'm hearing people every day when they call me saying, oh, God is moving on me, but it's hard. I'm doing this and that. God is tugging at you in your heart to stay connected to him. But you can't do anything because you got a calling on your life. You're not going to be able to get things moving in life like you wanted to do. And you see other people prospering here and in there because you got a calling on your life and you're trying to build everything up around you except your calling. And it don't work like that. Jesus just said, without me, you can do nothing. You got to stay connected to the vine. I'm not talking about these other people who God ain't moving on them, whose families wasn't praying over them when we were younger. I ain't talking about them. They're going to have all the things of Satan's kingdom. We talking about you, who the laying of the hands was on. When you was a kid, your mama prayed, your grandma prayed for you. Now God is honoring them prayers through your life and trying to break you out the stronghold of addiction and all the other stuff of this world. And I hear you. You know Jesus is trying to make a move on you because every time I talk to you, you say where you need to be lined up at in Jesus but you ain't taking the active steps to line yourself up. I can't do that for you. That's the part that you have to do. All you got to do is log on to get a word every week if that's the case, or go wherever you think the word is at. But since you don't know the word, I will follow somebody I knew from the streets because I knew this man used to be in the streets raising hell. Now he's preaching the gospel. If I can't understand or discern the spirit right now, I know that he's changed. Because I know where he come from. And I know what he used to do. And I know what he's doing now. If I don't know anything else. So there's ways. That God has. Hey. To show us. Go ahead Brother Dwayne. That's it. Look, 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 look. Boy to add on to that right. Yes sir. COVID. Boy COVID exposed a lot of things. Boy. I'm going to tell you. You know. Because people. Have, before COVID, people would be like, man, I got to find a church home. I got to find a church home. I need a church. I need a church. I need a church. Listen, when COVID hit, ain't nobody was looking for no church. Right, right, right. Right, right. Right. And I'm not saying that, you know, I knock people from going to church. I'm not saying that at all, bro. But what I am saying that that's probably one of the last, like, being a new Christian, like just being, just getting in connected with the word, one of the last things I probably would do is look for a church home. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Just because of what we are today, you right. know, there's some churches you're going to go to, you know, you ain't going to get the full understanding of the word. Right. Like I say, the pastor done prayed all week and God done gave him some insight on something, right? You know what I'm saying? But some of them ain't going to stick to that. Some things you ain't gonna never hear out of the church that's in the Bible. This facts. And this just is me understanding because I've been I've gone to church. I've been like I've been Catholic, you know what I'm saying? Most of my own childhood years, all the way up until uh teenage years, I was a Catholic man, and I'm telling you, the thing I, I didn't get closer to I didn't start understanding God until I became a grown man. 
You understand what I'm saying? Like the thing, the Catholic Church, they got a little pamphlet that they run off of. They got a book. I can't ever tell you that I've heard any of these scriptures mm. that I read and hear today that when I was in the Catholic Church, boy, I heard this. I can't say I did. You understand me? Matter of fact, confession, for instance, right? God said, you repent to him. You don't need to repent to, right. repent to God, man. Right. Nobody else. God. Get on your knees. Ask God for forgiveness. I don't care how many times you think you need to do it. You do this continually. You cease without pray. You pray without ceasing. Same thing. You ask for repentance daily. The closer you get to God, the more you're going to really see where you ain't nothing. Right. You're worthless. You feel me? And I say it that way because every little thing you're going to do gonna, almost going to lead into sin. We coming out of the world, you know what I'm saying? So that's the last, the like church, the man. Huh? I like your testimony, man. That's so powerful, man. Man, the church is not what it is. It's, it's, it's just like it was in the Bible. When Jesus went through and he went in, that, in the church building and he was turning over chairs. That's the right, same right. way you see church, right. man. It's a, especially the then. day. Right, everything then. Jesus is showing us. Remember, the one thing that we got to understand with the word, Dwayne, is that the same events that happened then are happening now. That's where you get the term, Jesus don't change. The things of God don't change. The things that were happening then, you see it. It's happening now. It's manifesting itself now. We got to get to the point to where we can get in the word and come boldly to the throne like Dwayne was saying. You can come boldly to the word now. Get your relationship with Jesus and be commissioned to go do the things that Jesus put and download on the inside of you with your measure. We don't go through man. Yes, we study together. We don't call no man father. And a lot of people, and the reason why I was saying that about Dwayne's story is because he just, I never knew that he was Catholic. But look how when you really bring yourself to God, he'll get you through those stages of you being young. Because just like Jesus, when his mother and father, Joseph, and his mother Mary found him in the temple, the scripture says after that he had to go with them because he was under their tutelage. He was under their authority. He was only 12. But look at when he got big, he had grown out of his mother's household, father's household. Then he could do his, his thing like he, you know, like he like he was always intending to do, is to do, do his father's business. Just like Dwayne. Look, now he done got older. Now God done got him out of that religiosity of Catholicism. Look at now he over here praising Jesus the right way, the Father and the Son. Look at that. And that's why I'm saying, because I've seen it when you were telling me that. If you really, on the deep side of your heart, search for Jesus and search for the Father, they're going to line you up. It might take five, six, seven years, whatever, to get you unraveled out of all of that mess you've been learning since you was a kid by other people, your parents or other people that you were under. See, that wasn't you. You were under them. But I love how God brought you out of that, brother, and bringing you to the knowledge of who he really is. That's so beautiful. Man, that's beautiful. When I came in the world, I mean, I mean, came and um, got born again before then. People just saying, only one God in heaven, only one God. You're right, there's only one God, the Father, and one mediator, the man Jesus Christ, who the Father calls God. That's our God, you hear me? Because without our God, Jesus Christ, there's no getting to the Father. You have to understand his position. You have to understand that he inherited all things in heaven and earth. You got to understand that. You got to understand in John 5, just like the Father have life in himself at 22, so has he given the Son to have life in himself. You got to understand that. And to understand that, you got to get out of what you've been learning in, in, in your carnality, that God is one, God is one. Because in the spirit, it doesn't say that. Amen. T, you writing on my board? <laughs> no, can you hear me? I hear you, my brother. You can hear me? I'm trying to talk, yes, but I, it won't let me. I hear you now, <laughs> Go ahead, bro. No, but, you know, we start from somewhere, big bro. Yes, and I hear you. <laughs> You know, we've been together all along, all along. Okay. Now, yes, yes, I am. 
going to this church. But yes, I was in these streets. Yes, I was here and there, there and here. And my heart has now got saved by the blood of Jesus. So I daily now because of my big bro, because of Jesus speaking through my big bro, Dar, to me. Um, yes, I hear what you're saying, man. Um, I am getting my food, but you can get the wrong food too. And we know what we've been speaking on. Um, it, it, um, like you were in a church before and you, you know, you, you know, you, you're getting closer and close. I'm, I feel I'm getting closer to where I need to be. I'm just keeping my food going, the, my, the right food going. Um, I'm plucking, I'm plucking out the, not the good, you know, not the bad. I mean, not the, I'm plucking out the bad, keeping it good. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not stopping. You know, it's only through Jesus. It's only through the Bible that I'm going to learn from. No one else, no one else. I, I won't follow. Yeah. I'm not going to follow nothing but Jesus. Amen. First, I wanted to clear up the scripture that I said, John 5 at 22. Actually, it's at 26. For as the Father have life in himself, so have he given the Son to have life in himself. That's showing two. Now, back to what T was saying. Before I started going to church buildings, I was going when I was with my mama. When I got older, I was going, you know, a little bit just all the time when I got in trouble, you know, in jail. When I actually got out, I got born again. And Jesus, when I went to another church after that and pledged to another church, because remember, scripture is important and the spirit is important too. get to know me first. What God said, <laughs> then everything else will be added on to you, because if I go into a church building and I haven't got to know God, all of the stuff that that man is talking about seem good because I don't know what is and what's not. Amen. And if that yes. starts piling on you. Just like the truth can pile on you, things that ain't the truth can pile on you too, because you don't know. Amen. So this Amen. is why you have to be careful, like Jesus was just saying, of the leaven, of the Pharisee, the doctrines of man. Be careful of that. Yes, sir. Because they start telling you you don't need to get baptized, and baptized yeah. don't mean nothing, and that's the whole essential part of being a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus yes. said in John 3 and 5, no man can enter into the kingdom of God unless they've been born by water and by spirit. spirit. Yes, sir. So why would I exile baptism? Yeah. Only to get baptized in the spirit but can't go to the kingdom because I didn't get in the water? That don't mm -hmm. make sense. So we got to watch out who we hear hearing the slick stuff from. Yes. It's real slick. Yeah. Yeah, you got to watch out because uh as you were saying just said a while ago uh it's a um uh, a christian group coming out and um uh, but they're not it's not they're more political but they're not following the word but it's the right. word right that's what it is i'm gonna say you gotta be very careful be careful you know yeah they sound good and everything but they're not following god's word it's more about their position Right. But they see things. Yeah. Now, remember, when we go into a building, I work construction. I like to use the analogy. We need to find out where a wall is. So what I do is we'll put our plumb bob up, and it'll swing. And wherever it stops at, that's where we're going to put our wall at. Just like this word right here. This is our compass. If it don't line up with this word right here, then ain't none of God. <clears throat> But you need the spirit in you so you can unlock and interpret this word right here. This is just not a book that you can just pick up and start understanding. That's why when we first picked it up, it, and none of it made sense. Amen. There's contradictions Amen. everywhere. But when the spirit of the Holy Ghost fall on you and give you the right measure where everything lines up, you will be able to see that there is not no fallacy in here. <laughs> this hey, line, all the way yeah. up the correct way. You just interpreting it with the wrong spirit. Yeah. Go ahead, 
hey, that's why it's important. See, you know, we yes, we have to pay attention where we're getting fed from. But what's more important than that is I'm in a meeting, dude. Get out of here. <laughs> what's more important, what's more important than that though, is coming to finding out the word for ourselves. Because if we find out the word for ourselves, it don't matter who it is right. that's well, saying something yes, to sir. you. Right. You will be able to decipher it. A, yes. Like the way. And that's what I'm that's saying, big bro. The spirit is so, in me. Oh, so important. You know what I'm saying? Especially right now where we are today. Man, look how many kids out here are being misled. Kids don't even know what they want to be no more. And I ain't talking about career-wise. I'm right. talking about when they come out where they are. Man. You understand me? Why? It's because the person that is supposed to be the adult in the situation has been manipulated and misled just as much as the kid right. as is being misled. Kid. You see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we have to understand the word first. Look, I'm going to tell you, when I picked the Bible up, bro, I was reading. I don't know where I started reading that, but boy, I was reading something. And something came up, and it was something that I was doing or into at the time. Yeah. Man, I said the Bible closed. He <laughs> talking about me. <laughs> right, right. right. Oh, everything. Yeah. Right. But we all have that encounter meant right. because we're not holy. Right. We're coming out of the world. Right. Right. So when you open it, you're going to read something. That offends you. It's a double-edged sword, man. Mm. This thing is active. Amen. Right? So so we got to seek God for our own self before <clears throat> we can really just start with these buildings. Right, right. Because what we're looking for, we, the purpose of going to the buildings because we're sick, right? But today, they're saying what, the building ain't promoting it like that. The, the building is promoting their agenda. If you right. read in the Bible, there ain't no Baptist, there ain't no Catholic, there ain't no Methodist, there ain't no Muslims, there ain't none of this in the Bible. God, religion is love. <laughs> love your brother, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Right. This is what God talks about. Love rules over anything. I don't care how much they say. They want to slap you. They want to step on you. They spit darts at you. Whatever. Hey, brother, I still love you. God bless you. You heard me? Move on. You know what they're wrestling with now? Man, I done throw darts at him. I done 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 talk bad about his mama. I done done disown everything about him. And he is still saying, God bless you. I love you. Why? How can we break that spirit? Right. It ain't a spirit for you to break as long as I keep feeding it. Right. And see, that's where you get in the word where it says, I'm gonna let you sweep, brother Lemuel, that you know you your fruit shall remain. You know, I have ordained you. What he's saying is I give you power and to go out and that your fruit shall remain. Because the ordainment with, with Jesus on the throne, you know, on the right hand of the Father, he's still working in us from the throne. And as he yeah. sent us forth. He knows that he's sending us forth among wolves, but you got to continue like the way was saying to let your fruit manifest, still show that love because that's what's going to draw them to make them come back is the love that you're showing them while they're being unloving. Go ahead, Brother Lemuel. Oh, yeah. Amen. Eric. Yeah. Yeah, um, Wayne was talking about when he opened the Bible and it's just I, I have that experience too, you know, something on your mind, then you open the Bible and and I for some reason what you had on mind is in the Bible. But when you read it, that's just what you were thinking about. Amen. Yeah. Right. Next week, when the Lord say the same, it's good that we're talking about that. It's divine. We're gonna get in the word how Jesus came to his own and they received him not. And he went in the temple and the minister handed him the word. And he opened the Bible up and went right to his cell. And all eyes was fixated on him. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And then we're going to see after Jesus told them the truth, what they did to him. Don't you know they ran him out the temple and down the street? And this is what you got today. People who do not want to deal with the truth. Now, remember, he made the world and the world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not. Now he up in the temple and sitting down and the minister came and got him, gave him the book and he opened the book up and went right towards himself. Just like Dwayne was saying. You can open the book sometime. God know. He, he know what you need to see. <laughs> get that prick. You can get that, you can get that prick. And you'll see yourself right there. Look, Jesus opened the word up and read about himself to them. We're going to dive in that a little deep next week and show you how people are offended at the truth. And it's only the truth that has set you free. Amen. Right here at Mark 8. 22 through 26, we titled it, I See Men as Trees. This is the man who made the world. And he cometh to Bethsaida, talking about Jesus. And they bring him a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. Now, the first thing Jesus did when they brought him the blind man is he led him out of town. Did possibly he led them away from the people who brought him <laughs> or the region he was in? And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. That means he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Now, this is the man who made all things, Jesus. He touched this man's eyes the first time, and he seen men as trees. When you come into this world, you don't see men as they are. That's why you're willing to drink and drive, kill yourself, and even kill others. But when Jesus restored him, the second time, he seen men as they are. He seen them clearly and he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into town nor tell it to any in the town. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're looking for that blessed hope to be restored by Jesus. If you haven't had your encounter with Jesus, know that you still come boldly to the throne of grace. Jesus know where you at and he's going to open that door. He's going to heal you. John 15 at 12 this commandment I, that I that you love one another I have like I have loved you 13 greater love than have no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends 14 you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you 15 henceforth I call you not servant for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. So Jesus didn't hold anything back from us. He calls us friends. He didn't hold anything back from us that the father has given him. You laying down your life for your friend is not only to not hold anything back, but to keep yourself connected to Jesus, which is divine. Because he's going to take that old character out of you and give you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. So when your friends see you again in your proper etiquette, they're going to want to know your God. Man, there's something changed about this guy. He might not even tell you that. He could be saying that to himself because they see the newness of what God is doing in your life. That's how you put down your life and pick up your life so men may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. It's not about what you say. Knowing scripture or being able to read. It ain't about none of that. That's why I gave he power. To become the children of God. Many people know scripture. But they haven't had their encounter with Jesus. That changes your character. That grafts you in. To the fold. 
like Dwayne was saying, the devil knows scripture and he got many of them hooked. But if you don't know that that devil is not standing on the central issue to believe in Jesus, guess what? You're going to go to hell right along with him with a skirt on, whether you got a skirt on or not. <laughs> You're going to end up in heaven with him because he don't believe in Jesus. But he got the masses. He got the crowd. He got everybody. Yes, he preaches holy. Yes, holy is a part of the kingdom. But that's what the devil going to do. He's going to come with some truth. But him himself, he's not standing. He's not sent of God. Because if he's sent of God, he would know Jesus, first of all. Because no man can come to the Father unless by the Son. And no man can come to Jesus unless you've been drawn by the Father. Amen. Yeah, bring amen. Bring ourselves to the word. Stay connected to the vine. Let Jesus do that work within us so we can save others through our character. Make sure you're standing right. Let Jesus heal you. Let him spit on your eyes. Let him, let him heal you. That not only saves you, but that saves your household too. Remember, <clears throat> your household gonna be looking at you. They gonna want to know Jesus through your character. Mom, my dad used to do all of this, did all of this. Now he's just so respectable. Now I don't believe anything they say about his past because he's not exemplifying that now. He's not showing that now. That's why I'm thankful for God. He took me out of my kid's life when I was out there in the street. Look at the work he was doing, only to put me back in there. When I had some sins, mm. <laughs> when hey. he restored some sense in me, I got something for that too. Take <laughs> this off. Go ahead, bro. Wait. <laughs> I had well, I had my first kid. My first look, the first kid that I know of, right? Oh, uh, I've heard people say they were pregnant and this, and this, and that. But I'm talking about me in the in the hospital. Um, and they're telling us that our baby ain't gonna make it. The first baby was a miscarriage. You hear me? Listen, I was uh, 37, I think. I might have been 37 or 38 when that happened. The point I'm bringing, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because, yes, I wanted kids when I was younger. God didn't give them to me until I was ready, until I was old enough. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I had to be where I am to all, in order to start having them. Look, it was a point in my life when I thought I couldn't make them. Me and my wife, we thought she ain't thought she could have them, and I thought I could make them. Right. The first kid, bro, did not live. Well, the first kid lived a couple of hours. Right. God showed both of us. You say you can't have them. You got to go through the whole process of having this baby, even though this baby ain't going to be here with you. You think you can't make them. How you think she got pregnant? Mm. Right, 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 right. See, so 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 right. God, we are where we need to be today. Right. You hear what I'm saying to you? Why? Because it's it's on God's timing, not ours. Right, right. So it's important that we get the word in us. It's important to have our own personal relationship with God. Cause I would rather you would rather want to know than not know, and you miss it when it came by. Right, right, right. That's beautiful, man. I love you, brothers, man. I just want you guys to know that I love you, brothers, man. I'm just thankful, man. I can come to the platform, and you know, I can be taught by you, brothers. You brothers don't even know how much you teach me, as well as the Lord through us teaching each other. Because it's important. Iron sharper nine is the best yeah, title you could ever come up with. You heard me? Yeah, that's very important. Hey, hey. Iron Sharp and Iron. Boy, that's one of the Man. best titles you could have came up with. That's a beautiful because guess title. what? Man. That's what's going on. Amen. Just to hear Ooh. each other's experience. Oh. Hear how God using each other. Hear how God Man. brought each other. And God is big. God is, God big. is huge, bro. God that's is it, huge. It amazes me. One person think that they're island. Think just because you heard from God. And I know you didn't hear from God if you neglecting to hear God through others. Good. See, you got this. Yeah. Remember, remember, First John at four and one through three says, 
many spirits have gone out. Try the spirit to see whether they're oh, a God. Oh, now, first yeah. you got to break that down because there's many spirits that have gone out. All of them going to say that they're from God. But you got to do the God test. You got to do the God test to examine which ones are from God. That's where you go to 1 John 2 at 24 through 25. If you continue on in that which dropped in you, you will continue on in the Father and the Son. And that is the promise that he has promised to eternal life. So the promise to eternal life is to continue on in the Father and in the Son. So if I got one of these spirits that went out, come to me, and they're saying that Jesus is the Father, Father is Jesus, they're not continuing on in both of them. Am I right? They're only continuing on in one of them because they say Jesus is the Father. We got to get this. This is the central issue of salvation. I'm not talking about a woman wearing pants and all of that. I'm talking about the this is a heaven or hell issue. Because John 3.16 is clear. Whoever believe on Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. First John 2 at 24 through 25 is clear. You have to continue on in that which dropped on you. And that's the Holy Ghost. If he shall remain in you, you shall continue on in the Father and in the Son. And that is the promise that it says at 25 of eternal life. Eternal life is the promise that you continue on in the Father and the Son. Not saying that Jesus is the Father and that the Father is Jesus. That's denying Jesus. So we got to be careful who we're listening to, what we're talking about. Because the scripture tells us the blind leading the blind. Yes, yes, this dude sound good. But guess what? You end up following him and he wasn't never standing the right way. And remember, the blind leading the blind, they both should fall in dead. So you go in the ditch with him just for following him. So you got to be careful who you are following. Are they standing the correct way as well? All the other stuff we could talk about. But that's what Jesus said. Get to know me first. Then everything else could be added on to you. Like Brother mm -hmm. Dwayne said, we got to be careful trying to get to know these buildings first and they misleading us in our vulnerable heart. You want to stand the correct way. Amen. That's very important. John hey, I got Steve. something to add to that. Oh, I want to yes, add sir. something to that, right? Um, look, and I, I might, I'm going to need your help right yes, now because I'm going to tell you all something. Um, and I, cause I know it's in there. I just don't know where. But it's in there because I've read it. So there was a part when God told this guy to go to this city. He said, and I want you to go and deliver this message. He said, but I don't want you to come. The way you went in is not the way you should come back. And don't eat nothing there. Right? And so God went and delivered this, this message. And then the guy was pressing on him, like, come on, man, you want to come on, eat something with me? Right. And he's like, nah, I don't need nothing to eat. And um, he left and he was going out. The man told his servant, go find a man of God and right. tell him, right. come back and get something to eat. And um, the man said, man, God told me not to do none of that here. He said, but I am a, I am a man of God as well. Right. Hey. So the man turned back around and did what God told him not to do, even though he was, he didn't, he didn't check the spirit. He didn't say, well, look, let's pray about this right now. See, see, that's what needs to happen when, when somebody is coming to me in, in mind, God, is this, is, is this the right thing I'm getting? Is this what I need from this person? Is this person telling me what you say? Am I, am I supposed to turn back around? You know what I'm saying? But instead he went back. He went back to that house. Right. So God sent word through the help and said, no, God sent word through the man that told the dude he was the spirit of God. God said, tell him, by you disobeying me, you will surely die. A lion is going to eat you. Hey, so, so the man of God left that house. And guess what? Lion killed him. He never made it back to the city where he was going. 
Right. And the man and, and 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 the dude went and followed and said that man, pick that man up and bring him back to my house, right. and I'm gonna bury him. He said, and when I die, right. put me next to him. When I die, right. bury me next to right. him. Right. See, right. he knew that man was a man right. of God. Right, right. See what I'm so right. this is what yeah. you think mm -hmm. you. you uh, getting fed from mm -hmm. somebody and if you a part of you feel like it ain't right, right. pray stop and pray mm -hmm. and ask God for guidance right then and there right. understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying because it's that important had he would have prayed he could have saved both of them life but by him not praying and asking God if this is what you want me to do or am I doing what I'm supposed to <laughs> by him not stopping and having that little time to pray <clears throat> trying the spirit you know what I'm saying? Cost him his life. That's beautiful, Dwayne. So we definitely gotta be aware of that. I always liked it. I always liked that story. And that's yeah. what it remind me of. It was the old prophet and the new prophet. And God told the new prophet to don't even come back the way he went in. Not to stop at anybody's house. What we're saying here is God is gonna tell you in the spirit what to do. But man, on the outer words, who you're looking <clears throat> at is going to tell you something you different. Right. You rather obey God in the spirit <clears throat> than to obey man who you're looking at. That man, mm -hmm. the old prophet, he was an old prophet too, but he told that young prophet to come in the house to eat with him. God already told the young prophet, don't even stop and come back the same way or don't go into anybody's house to eat. And that man was able to come out there and talk him into the house to eat. And after he got done eating, he said, God said, there's a lion that's going to eat you up when you leave from here for not obeying him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was right. He, that man died. And the old prophet once said, when I die, I want to be buried right next to him. Because he knew he was a man of God. And he knew what he should have, you know, what he did, that he shouldn't have did that. Talking about the young man. But we got to understand that when God tells us in the spirit what to do, we got to be obedient to that. You know, there's going to be many men trying to coax you and deceiving you, trying to tell you they're of God. But what did God tell you? Everything God tells you should line up with his word. This is our guide. That's what I was saying. That's why it's important for us to get to know him first and everything will be added unto us. Because if you don't know the word, and I read that scripture. It's just like most of the Bible I've read. And that's why in the story, when you go to it, I can jump in there with you. That's exciting. But if I need to show somebody that, and they require that from me, I got to go get that to show them that. But a lot of the Bible, you don't hear Jesus. Jesus lived the Bible. He didn't run around for quote sake, John 15, John 2. You could tell people. You could tell them that they just got it for quote sake because they're too busy trying to quote the number and where it's at more than knowing and understanding the story. See, you want to be able to somebody sit, speak the word, you could jump right in there with him and mm -hmm. understand the word with them. Also, it's good to me to I'm 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 trying to I'm I'm um, I'm in the process of I'm 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 trying to, you know, lesson off myself right. about it. But it's good <laughs> to quote the scripture. It's good to quote the scripture, but it's better to practice it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, you don't you don't have to be able to know where exactly, but like Derek is saying, being able to have the conversation of, oh, wait, he know what he's talking about. <laughs> right? Being able to say, I did see that. You know, being able to relate is important. It's important because somebody might not be somebody might be trying to get closer to God through you so it's important that we read the word and have a recollection of it being able to quote scriptures that's something else you understand me because I'm going to tell you I've been reading the Bible now man for a couple of years bro and it's, it's, it's only a couple of scriptures that's in my head off the top that I can actually know you know what I'm saying? What it is. And I don't, man, I'm telling you, like, 
I hear I listen at the Bible. This is in the morning to start my day. It's word, you know, and I'm trying to make it to where anytime I wake up in the middle of the night, whatever it is, I'm going and read me a scripture. I don't care what I'm doing. It doesn't matter. Why? Because I need to feel my spirit. My spirit needs to be fed. You know what I'm saying? If the spirit is fed, I can do the work. But if the flesh is fed and I don't let the spirit go hungry, I'm more dangerous to be misled. I'm more closer to falling behind one of these jokers that's going to lead me to hell because I'm not being spiritually fed. So playing the Bible, playing the Bible in my ear, reading the scripture from time, from every chance I can, it helps to get me closer. It helps of not being able to be deceived. It helps for the no. Man, that ain't right. Anybody else got any last words? That was a beautiful word, Dwayne. Let's cross the no our way. Mm. Remember, many spirits yeah. have gone out. You got to try the spirit to see whether they're of God. That was perfect. Let's got somebody come up to you and they can have a good job. And this is what I noticed with men. They can come up, they can have a good job, and all they have to say is God's name. Then all of a sudden, we start believing that they're of God. Now, I'm not saying to judge anybody, but what I'm saying is guard your way. Guard your way so you can know who you are up around. This is what God tells us to do. And men rather obey God than man. So you got man telling you, don't judge him, don't do this, don't do that. But you got God telling you, try the spirit to see whether they're of God. Just because they got a good job and come up saying that God's name, that don't mean that they're of God. Many spirits have gone out that profess that. You got to do the test so you can understand who you're around or understand your way. It's very well important. And I did that in my yeah. ministry. God showed me while I was walking with people, studying with people, and come to find out they don't believe it. They got, don't get me wrong, they know the scripture. They know the scripture front back. But when it came to the test, they don't believe in Jesus. That foils it. That foils it all now. Because you got to understand, this ain't no kumbaya. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This ain't no can we all get along. There's people here that are antichrist that are against Jesus. And if you hear, if you're if they hear you and you won your brother, that's good. But if they don't hear you, you better get away from them. Yes, Thank God you. desire, yes, God desire all to come to the kingdom. He desire all to come to the kingdom. But all got to get to know who Jesus is and believe on him. Go ahead, Brother Lemuel. Sorry about that. Oh, oh no. I was just saying thank you, Dwayne, for the, the, the scripture that he was quoting. Man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anybody got any last words? We're always thankful, like we said, that you brothers to just show up on a consistent basis. God is definitely doing the work in you guys and through you guys and me as well. And as we continue to just sharpen in our word and things are going to open up, you know, in your household, in your life, be ready to receive it. Remember next week, we're going to, if the Lord said the same, we're going to speak on how Jesus came to his own, but they received him not. He made the world. How would you feel if you made everybody and they didn't accept you? <laughs> Beware of the leaven. Beware of the rising of these people with the doctrines of man. Beware of that. We need to follow Jesus so we can be directed in the spiritual realm the right way. Jesus went in the temple and sat down, opened the book that was handed to him, the word, of course, went right to itself. As soon as he got done speaking the word, all eyes were fixated on him. They say, ain't this Joseph's son? Ain't, ain't his father Joseph? See, they know him in the flesh. But we're trying to get you to understand in the spirit. We don't walk according to what we see. 
We walk in according to the spirit. That's where the change has to be made. <clears throat> Amen. And had these people knew who Jesus was in the spirit, mm -hmm. then they would know that they had God in front of them. Hallelujah. Like we always Amen. Say. I got one more thing to add to that. Yes, sir. Look, yes, sir, Brother Dwayne. They, they asked Jesus. They say, oh, isn't that your mother outside? Isn't that your brother outside? Yeah. Jesus told him. He said, listen, my mother and the people who are my mother and my brother are the people that do the, the will of my father. Yeah, amen. See, so it doesn't matter if y'all born in the same household. Right, right. It doesn't matter that you came from the same man and woman. Right. What matters is, are you doing the work of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's be a big feel. And I like that, Dwayne, because maybe the Lord gives us that the word together just for that. We said it many times before, but now it's becoming clearer that you got to understand that God is doing a work. So when you grow up in the household and God is tucking at your heart and then changed you and converted you, you got to know who your real family is. Like Dwayne was saying, Jesus took that perfectly good opportunity to show the difference of worldly family and those that are of the spirit doing the will of the father in heaven. That's important. You got to pick up your cross, meaning you're going to go through things in this life, but still profess his name, still walk towards Jesus. And they're going to hate you for his name's sake. That's what Jesus told us. But blessed are you when men shall separate themselves from your company for my name's sake. So how many people get gathering up around you should say something. Are you blessed? Are they coming around you? Are you telling them about Jesus? Are you drinking and smoking with them? Are you sharing in the things that you claim that you don't partake in when you're with them? Or are you picking up your cross while you're with them? Still telling them about Jesus? still not indulging with the things of this world? Are you a hypocrite in front of them in their minds when they're not looking at you? Are they talking behind your back? Yeah, he claimed he a God in there, but he just got done hitting. He just got done hitting this, hitting this joint with me in the back room. What I'm saying, we got to be careful. We got to be careful what we're doing. If we really came into contact with God, we got to be careful. Because you running around living a lie, telling people you came into contact with God and you haven't, you ain't doing nothing but deceiving yourself. God gives you power when you come into contact with him. The power to live right, to talk right, to walk right. Now, I'm not saying we ain't going to have no mishaps, but the majority of your life is going to be protruding with the gospel. Amen. Amen. You ain't gonna be like Praise a lot of these God, guys brother. professing Jesus out their mouth, but you catching stealing out the store and thieving and Come selling on. drugs over here and driving up and down the streets and and playing games. You ain't gonna see all of that with Christ. Mm -hmm. And this is what we got to be careful for. We got to know our way. Try the Spirit to see if they're of God. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying don't show them love after that. You still love on them. You still trying to win mm -hmm. them to the gospel. But you know who they are. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Amen. Man. You know, hey, I used man. to say, man, I'm gonna go to I'll go to hell for the save somebody else. Like, you hear me? And, and, hey man, it's a lot of things that I used to say back, you know, and all I think about was what the man says, right? You know, and I know people, why you would just why would you say you're gonna go to hell to save a life? I mean, that's my purpose. Right? You know, like think about it. When you was a kid, you ain't how many times I see no, what but saying, I'm just bro. saying, right? So, so think about it, right? People tell you, <laughs> I wouldn't bring God. That's what I say to people about that. Where is that? You know what I'm saying? Where is that? Because at the end of the day, God came back for the sick. The people who are sick, he's not here for the people well. Places if you 
and you. See, that's the thing, Dwayne. I hear what you're saying, Dwayne. But this is the thing what we got to understand. Look like he was with the sick. Yeah. I did. Okay. No, I, no we, hear, we hear you. I hear you. And this is where I'm glad you brought that up because Jesus did come to get those that were sick. But we got to be careful. What we're saying is to be careful of the people that are sick but under the disguise of playing like they're with Jesus and teaching Jesus and really have not been converted. Now, there's differences there. There's some people that are sick. Oh, I lost you. I there's lost some people you. that are sick, but they're not out dirtying up Jesus' name, teaching yes. and preaching the word yes. that they have not been called to. That's it's, right. So That's you got to right. be careful of those people saying that they're with yeah. Jesus and they never really met him. And never, and not even met him, bro. Can't even tell you nothing about him. Right, and ain't even trying to tell you nothing about him. Ain't trying to tell you nothing about him. So there is people that's sick and know where they're at. That Jesus is and they got coming to, for the sick, and you yeah. got some people who's who's using the deception they don't even want to God's Jesus. name. You know, they got people to tell you, ain't no Jesus, ain't no right. God. If there was a God, I wouldn't be going through this. Man, you tripping? You woke up? Who, who woke you up then? Who gave you life? You know, and see, even, and see, even Dwayne, even like people like them, those are people that are sick and they don't know no better. Yeah. And even what they say, you know, because we used to say some things when we didn't know God, but yeah. God who loved us before we loved ourselves, you know, he waited on us. He, he worked. Oh, man. He loved on us. I'm not that's even talking of, about those people. That's I'm part of the testimony, about the people bro. Who are acting like they're with Jesus, but are deceiving people. I'm talking about those people. Yeah. Yeah, saying that's that they're of testimony. God, but they're smoking weed. Saying Come that on, they're man. of God, but they're going bed to bed. <coughs> Come on, man. Saying that they're of God, and they're going to teach you about God, but they're not living God. You hear me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm talking mm -hmm. about them people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Steering people wrong. Teaching yeah. people wrong. Yes. Yes. Deceiving. Right. Those are the people. <laughs> like, the, like, like the guys, like. Uh, like Pharisees, go, like who, who was talking about uh, be aware listen, of man's so doctrine, we, the leaven of man, yeah. the leaven of these church buildings that's teaching the doctrine of man and not of Jesus. Yes, yes. So they can get your tithes and offerings, mm -hmm. so they can get your money under the deception of that. That's right. We gonna keep misleading these. We gonna keep misleading these sheep. Man. Long they keep, long they keep coming. Right, right, right. Matter of fact, we're going to put a different requirement on them. I need you to bring your text up to the building so we can <laughs> figure out how much you need to give to the church. Amen. Amen. Pastor need, pastor, pastor need a roof over his head. Right, right. You know I mean? um, one thing I, I had also, I was in this church that I was going to, man, and I'm telling you, man, the people's spirit in there is amazing, bro. But I couldn't, un I, you know, it's things I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, why do we have to have a meeting when it's about doing something to God? Right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, we, what, we, what we sitting here, what we meeting about? We trying to do anything to win. So the goal is, the goal is you want a packed church building, right? The goal is to win souls. We trying to get people here to close to the goal. That's the whole out game, right? Right, right. What we need, what we have, hey, listen. Well, we got to have a meeting about. <laughs> what is there a meeting about? Right. And mm -hmm. I went to this place that was like that too, Dwayne. It was crazy because they got to meet the ass man. They yeah. got to meet the ass pastor instead of doing what the word says, which they claim to be up in there studying and getting to know. Come on. I didn't even, some church, the Lord had the word in me so good. I didn't even have to join some of these bills when I went to. They just wanted me on the board with them. You know what yeah. I mean? The man will try mm -hmm. to use you. <clears throat> Yeah. God was already showing me not to join. But I yeah. went to this one study. I mean, this one, you know, study up in the room with all the people of the church. And when it came to do Jesus way, they didn't want to do that. They had to talk to the pastor and group up. Come on, well, man. Jesus is saying right here what it's for us to do. This is our pastor right here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man. Straight up, bro. something else, man. I'm telling you. Ooh, boy, we, we look, bro. We screwed up. People, like for instance, people will say, man, the world is messed up, and I keep correcting them. 
I'm like, man, it ain't the world. The world ain't doing nothing. I said, it's the people in it. You know, <laughs> this is this is what God, look, think about how long God went through the world looking for somebody to save us. Right, right. Till he realized that, man, they can't save them. Ain't nothing right. that can save them. I right. have to go down to the earth in human form. <clears throat> Cause that's the only they need. Look, we killing all they killing all these animals for nothing. Mm -hmm. All these animals, we doing all these animal sacrifices, and ain't nothing changing. Getting over on the people. I see that's that same spirit we was talking about. All those people in the building, mm -hmm. all those Pharisees, yeah. beware of the leaven, the doctrine of man. They didn't even see God when He was in their face. But look at they trading the animals, they taking your tithes and offerings, they taking your food, <coughs> they doing all of that. Get over, brother Lemuel. You got something you want to say, brother Lemuel? Well, we, yeah, but you was yeah, what you were saying. One thing when you were saying we went to the church, you was into the words, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, and they, the, everything they was doing was contradiction of the right, word. Right, you know? right. Yeah, right. and I was looking at it like you know how Dwayne was saying. <laughs> We're reading right here what our pastor Jesus said. We don't need to go huddle. <laughs> this is the word. This is what we do. And see, people got to be spiritually, you got to be spiritually inclined to meet the spirit, to be able to follow Jesus in the word. Just like he said, my sheep hear my voice and another they won't follow. See, they can't mm -hmm. hear the voice that's on here because mm -hmm. they're doing it with a car with carnality. The carnal mm -hmm. can't find follow the things of the spirit. They're at war with each other. That's why they can't line up in the word because they're not of the spirit. This is the word. Jesus is the word. All of it. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Right. I'm going to read this last word right here at 1 John at 4 1 through 3 like I quoted earlier but let's look at it again. Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirit where they're there of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So many spirits that are false prophets have gone out into the world. Try that spirit to see whether it's of God. Now remember, you got to be of God so you can know if that's of God, right? Mm, yeah. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. If I'm saying Jesus is the Father, then you're denying that's Jesus Christ in the flesh. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, where you have heard that he should come and even now already is in the world. Now, I got to see this big old dude on TV he got all of these people, and he preaching good. Yes, he preaching holy. That's an essential part of who Jesus and the Father is. But when they get down to the doctrine of what he stand on, he denied Jesus in y'all's face, and you don't have enough power to go anywhere. But sit up around him every Sunday. Talk to you and tell you he did more work than Jesus. But you sit around in front of him every Sunday when the Bible said Jesus did so much that all the books couldn't even contain what he did. But he just let you know he did more work than Jesus. Ain't that something? Or you sit up around this man, he told you 85% Jamal Bryant. Jesus was out of line. Ain't that something? When the father said he was perfect, and he is what pleased. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased with. Come on now. We got to get it together, people. If Jesus come right now, we got to get it together, people. That is the spirit of Antichrist. If you denying Jesus, you saying there's only one in heaven, you denying Jesus. We have several scriptures where Jesus was manifested. Let, do we want to see one more before we go? Let's go to 1 John. Let's look at the Apostle John at 1. That which from the beginning. See, that's why you got to know the word. So you can know where to go to. That which was from the beginning. Talking about Jesus. Which we have heard. 
which we have seen with our eyes. John is explaining how Jesus was manifested to them. They heard him. They seen him with their eyes, which we have looked upon and our, hand, were, and our hands have handled the word of life. They touched it. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested to us. That's important. Jesus was manifested to the apostles. John said, we seen him, we touched him, we held him. We kicked it with him. Do I got to put it in terms like that for you to understand? We kicked it with him. He talked to us. He healed us. He held us. He walked with us. He talked with us. And he was manifested from the Father. Amen. We got to believe this Jesus. <laughs> Remember, many spirits have gone out. People got their own Jesus. But you got to believe the Jesus of the Bible. The apostles Jesus, the apostles doctrine that walk with Jesus, talked with him. Jesus is still working on the throne through his apostles. Many people had visions of God, seen Jesus. The same vision the apostle Paul had, went up to heaven, to the third realm, spoke with Jesus. <laughs> Jesus didn't just stop working. Jesus is still working, making an intercessory for us. It's just about who you believe. And we rather obey God than man. So like we always say, if you have not given your life to the Lord, Romans 10, 9, if you confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God raised Jesus on the third day, thou shalt be saved. And go and get baptized. John 3 and 5. Jesus lets us know man cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and by spirit. Being baptized is symbolic. It is. Look at Jesus' cousin John, six months older than him, came before Jesus to pave the way to point to the one who was coming. Hallelujah. His cousin, according to the flesh. But in the spirit, Jesus was from the beginning. You got to know these two so you can understand what's going on. John was a man who was born with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He came to pave, pave the way and preach repentance for all men that they should believe on the one who is coming after him, whose shoes he's not worthy to fulfill. <laughs> this is important. Baptism, baptism is symbolic. God gave us that. God gave us that. That is a prerequisite unto salvation. Yes, the Holy Ghost could fall on you before you get baptized, <laughs> but guess what? If it do, you go back and get in the water. <laughs> Jesus showed that already with the Gentiles at Cornelius' house. Every man who the Spirit fell on, either they got in the water first or they went back and got in the water. Amen. Anybody got any last words? Brother Lemuel, do you have something you want to say? Oh, uh, no. No, I don't have anything. Brother T, you got anything you want to say, brother? No, sir. No, sir. Amen. God bless you guys. Remember, we see men as trees. Our eyes is open up first. We don't see things how they are. When we have our encounter with Jesus, we can see clearly. Revelation 3.18, remember, Jesus, I counsel from you to buy from me gold that's been tried in the fire, that thou may be rich in right raiment, and that the nakedness, you know, that you can be clothed from the nakedness, the shame of thy nakedness, and eye salve so you can see. So we need the Holy Ghost so we can see clear, so we can walk clear. Amen. Go ahead. Pray us out, Brother T. God bless you, brother. Like always, brother. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our hands, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for a great, great Bible study this morning. And for putting us all together as one. And thank you for letting us learn from each other. Like it was said in the Bible, we will teach each other. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for just keeping our families close. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping your hands over us and our families. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to just watch over our families, watch over our children, and watch over us. And, and just 
Thank you for everything you're doing, Lord Jesus. Thank you for just waking us up this morning and and we didn't wake up on the wrong side, you know. Um, thank you for keeping our houses over us and we're warm at night and food in our stomach, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the little things, Lord Jesus. Thank you for letting us look at, you know, people and see the good in them and just know how to, you know, just thank you for keeping us where we are good, good spirited. And um, let our lines, let our light shine out and show others that you are Jesus who is in heaven. And Jesus, in your holy good name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Let's follow Jesus. Yes, sir. It's important. Especially in this hour now, like Dwayne was saying, we're in a critical hour right now. We're being stuck in these places and we can't get free because, you know, it has to be. I don't know. Um, there was a scripture in the word, and the Pharisees, they came to apprehend Jesus. And the thing about knowing Jesus, how powerful he is is that he was able to tell them in the set, in their face, that it wasn't his time yet. <laughs> Do you hear me? Mm. Now, you want to be bold in the spirit because God has come to you in the spirit and you know that God is over all things. That you could tell them that your time is not up. <laughs> and they'll mm. obey that. They couldn't even in their cognitive. They couldn't even make a... Because that's the Father that's holding them. See, this is why you got to get to know both of them, Jesus and the Father. They couldn't even do, they could speak on it, but they couldn't bring themselves to the point of acting on it. See, mm -hmm. that's why you got to know that even the devil is subjected to God and he can't do nothing unless God has allowed it. Mm -hmm. So even when they wanted to come apprehend Jesus, Jesus was able to tell them his time was not yet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got another one for you. To where when it's your time, it's because God says so, not mm -hmm. because of man. Yeah, hey, I, I got another one for you too. But I was thinking, but it's early. You talk, you had touched on this a little bit, right? Uh, Pontius Pilate. Yeah. Uh, he he was telling Jesus at the time, "Don't you know I have power over you to say if you want to die now, or if you want to live now?" Jesus said, "You have no power over me." <laughs> Right. If my father didn't tell you, my father's the only one that has power over right. me. I don't care because of my father, not because of you. Yeah, amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. the way, yeah. The way, no, he was telling them, the way, no, you you hit it. He was telling them, father's father was, don't I have the power to release you or let you free? Why you ain't talking to me? And Jesus let him know the only power that he has is what his father has given him. You hear me? So man don't have power. The only power man has is what God has given you. Thank you for cleaning that's that why up we for me too. Get to know God so you can know the power that's over man. Where man don't yes. have that control over your life. Yes. That's what we're talking about in these buildings. Man having control over your life opposed you being able to get in the scripture and follow Jesus. Definitely. That's important. Very important. Mm. The word. The word, man. Love you guys. Yeah, yeah, amen on that. The way she just said, amen. Man. Yeah, that's very important. Very important. We do. We got to know Jesus so we can know how to respond. We can know how to, you know, just the things that's going to go on in our life. We're moving in the series. We're moving in a critical era now. Things are about to start getting worse and worse out here. And we need, to, we need these study groups so we can study the word. You guys got any brothers who's interested? Don't invite them. This is you guys' platform. This ain't mine. Just like if I had a building, I'd be throwing the keys to Dwayne if I got to go do something over here or Lemuel or T if I got to go do something. Because this is all of our building. Amen. Yes, God moved on me to, to get it going, but God going to move on us all to keep it going. And just as much as I got rights to it, you do as well. So whenever you brothers got a word, or whenever you brothers want to put anything, just Come on with it. Hallelujah. Don't stop the word. Amen. Praise forward. God. We can't. We shouldn't. Mm. Um, 
I apply, I apply it to my life like this. People want to have their conversations and they want to talk about whatever they want to talk about. Right. In my heart, in my mind, the way I think about it, well, this is the perfect time for me to talk, put throw God in the mix. <laughs> yeah, man. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what? And that's what yeah. Go ahead, mm -hmm. brother. Oh, well, well, I was saying that's what I like about, you know, Iron Shop and Iron. I was on Tuesday night and Sunday. Everybody had a different opinion. Then you get a, a, a lot of information, you know, uh, just studying, you know. I was talking to the brother yeah. at the penitentiary this morning and we touched on that. That, you know, we was going up to this building. He wasn't going, he was locked up, but he called in. And, but they're so committed to the doctrine of man and the agenda that he didn't want to leave the keys to, he didn't really trust in us. And this is the point that I'm talking about. We got to build in love to where we trust in each other to know that this is God's platform, first of all. This ain't mine, even though you started it or I started it. This is God's platform, first of all. So if you got something you got to go do, you throw the keys to your men that still need to show up here and perform for God. But they was so much, this is my building. If I'm not there, I'm not opening it. And that's the wrong spirit, period. Because we're as a family, I thought we were. <laughs> and when God, when I got born again and I went to that church, God was teaching me in a hard place. The spirit was moving in me what not to do when I was at church and what not to do. And what to do. And I love that God did that with me, man. God used these churches, man, to get me up to speak in front of everybody. Now I can't keep my mouth shut. At first I was quiet. I didn't want to get up. God was using the man to get me up to do offering in front of everybody, like three, two, three hundred people. And I was a person that was quiet and shut off. But I love how God used that to build me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's important. We got to be built up. We got to let God use us through man. It might be through man to get us to where we need to see things. That's what I'm saying earlier. Somebody who thinks that they're one island and just because God gave me a measure and came to me, I don't need nobody else. And, and that's where these men are going to sink at because we need each other. You got information, Dwayne, that I don't got. You got information, T, that I don't got. You got information, Lemuel, that I don't got. But they go together. Hallelujah. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. they go together. Yep. Yes, they go together, bro. You guys be blessed. Amen. You guys have a good rest of the week. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy this weekend and enjoy your day off. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. man. You too. God, yeah. all families, man. God bless y'all to see many, many more. Man, and whoever needs to heal them, whether it's mentally, physically, or spiritually, man, seeking the Lord for it. Right, 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 right. Amen. Yeah, I enjoyed everything. Enjoyed every, everything okay, this well, morning. I tell Brother Clarence, too, to come on. If he wants to, come on in. I heard him last week. I heard Brother Clarence with you last week. That was so beautiful, man. Oh, Clarence. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was nice, man. Yeah. He over here taking care of his brother. That's so beautiful. Man. Yeah. Yeah, he was over here on Tuesday. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but he said he was listening to Michelle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Michelle said Tuesday, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, beautiful, man. I love it, man. I love what God's doing yeah. and what he's going to continue to do with us. But, you know, leave this stuff open for it. It's going to be beautiful, my brother. You got to be blessed. Remember, right. we're going in with Jesus. We're going in with him. We're going to follow him. He's going in and sitting down. He's going to crack the word open. He's going to point hey. to himself. He's going to watch them point and look at him. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, your wife Your wife said last week, though, seeking. I just told this to somebody yesterday. Yeah. Seeking. seeking. It's an accent word, right? right? Meaning yeah. continually. Right. You're doing something. You're not just, and I'm talking about reading. You're reading. You're uh, looking on the internet for right. different things. You know, you're applying, you're having conversations, and it all is for the for the understanding and the hope for of God. You know what I'm saying? Bro, we have to diligently seek and not just in one way. Right. 
<laughs> multiple. God is the God of all. Yeah. God be blessed. God bless the weekend. Thank you for that. Okay. All right, everybody, take care. See you soon. Right. Yes. All right, right Dwayne. See. All right. Have a nice week. All right, Dwayne. All right, darling. Have a good day. Okay, everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm.